Now we are not seeing anything fail because these other add, subtract, and multiply, they don't even call or say that how they need to call that server. So let's change that loophole. What we want, just like how our, um, our client is adding metadata for each call, we want the server to be able to verify each call. Now, I haven't proven that to you yet. I, we read the stuff and we configure it, but let's see and confirm that that is what's happening. So let's copy this, paste it here, and then let's close everything to make sure we know what we're modifying. So this is exercise four. And what we want to do is see from the server side that it is getting um, that metadata for each call that we are getting metadata. So what we want to do is make sure that our, on the server side, we don't have to call update our methods to say which method should be authorized or not. We don't want to do that here. This is going to leave to somebody forgetting to call something. Um, so let's take this out. Um, so none of these should be calling authorized. Yep, or authorized too. Let's take this out. So now we have our service implemented to do what it's supposed to do. It doesn't know anything about whether it should have extra information or not. We want to put that somewhere else. And so that somewhere else is going to be on the server itself. So what we want to do on the server is add an interceptor and grpc that and the interceptor what the interceptor does is exactly that it intercepts each call that comes into our server and so you can see we have a streaming client interceptor so we want a unary interceptor and a unary interceptor returns a server option that sets the unary server interceptor for the server only one unary interceptor can be installed the construction of multiple interceptor example chaining can be implemented at the caller all right so we want a unary server interceptor and it's just this interceptor let's call it ic and it's this thing so what does this look like well if we try to take a look pull up the documentation for it by clicking on it Unary server interceptor provides a hook to intercept the execution of a unary call on the server. Info contains all the information of this RPC the interceptor can operate on. And Angular is the wrapper of the service method implementation. It is the responsibility of the interceptor to invo invoke the handler to complete the RPC. Hmm, interesting. So I'd say let's copy this first of all and see what we're dealing with. So basically it's a type and it's a function type that we have to implement and install. So here we have, let's go to the bottom. We have this function that we need to implement. So it's going to be, take this out. Let's call it my unary interceptor and it's a function. And let's just put these types on different lines so we can see what's going on. And so let's save. All right. So what should this function look like? Now it says that info contains all the information about the, the RPC that's being called. That's good. Um, but this handler represents an abstraction of the RPC being called and it's our responsibility to call it. What that means is this, if we install this interceptor, and we can install this interceptor by doing this. We can simply say um, grpc that uh, unary interceptor, and then this is my unary interceptor, and this returns a server option. And so now we can take this and append it to our list of server option. So let's do that. And so if we append this to the list of server options we have, then we should be setting up a server with 
credential, transport layer credential, and an interceptor. And the interceptor is going to get call every for every call that comes into the server. Okay, let's test that and see. Now it says that our, when our interceptor is called, it's, it's the responsibility of the interceptor to call the function that represent what is being called. If we basically, if we do not call this handler, the call that is invoked will not be called. And so we have to do the check here to make sure that it's supposed to be called. So what we can do is log, let's do some, some login. So we'll print out the name of the method being called. And of course, like it says, we have to return something. So why don't we return what the result of, of calling this handler? And right now we don't test anything. All we're gonna see is print out that our interceptor is being called. So let's go here and go back up. And we're in exercise four, server, go build. And then we run it. And we haven't changed our client in any way because it's just the server we're working on to say that we want the server to be able to um, do a better job of how it intercept and validate clients. So if we do that, as you can see, when we run this, all our unary calls showed up. Now, why didn't um, the call for random and some show up? Because those are streaming and we did not install a streaming interceptor. We installed just a unary interceptor and so it's for all these unary call. And notice that every time we add a call, we get the full path of that service that implemented and the call name. So that tells us that our interceptor is being called. And now this gives us a place, one place to do authentication. So no longer do we need to have to worry about having this secure, these two secure function on the, uh, the math service, that is a nice clean separation of responsibility. They simply do whatever they were doing and you could come around and add security later and you don't have to modify this code. So we're not gonna try to touch this code. Only in the client, you might have to modify the call and method or where you call it if you wanna do um, call options or in our case, add extra metadata per a, for a particular call. But even there, if you're not doing that and all you want is all of them to send the same information, notice how we're able to add metadata. Well, let me prove it to you for each call. So let's make sure that here when we are call, let's just get the metadata anyway, right? Before we were doing just that. Well, let me paste these authentication function. And note, remember we were doing something like this. We were saying that you can get the metadata and authenticate the, the, the so let's do save this. And let's make sure it's bringing in the right thing. Yes, it is. So in our call here, we can do something like this. And then the key and value. And so we still leave this line just in case this has nothing, but it shouldn't be. So let me just take that out, actually. All right. So which one are we? We're still in exercise four. So let's do, we already proved that we get in call there. So let's do this. So save, all right, let's try and rebuild. Um, we see import not use logs. Where is that? Mat server, ah, mat server, because it's not doing all that stuff before, as before. It's just doing its, what it was meant to do. So let's build it. And then let's run our server. We didn't change the client again in any which way. So let's run the client. And then now notice what happened. For add function, we got um, the same thing we were getting before, which was the three pieces of information that we did not add. But notice how we get key two with our add function. Similarly with our subtract function, we get key two, even though we didn't modify them to have this information. Um, for a multiply function, we also get key two. For division function, we got key two. Um, but then notice for mod, mod, we get key one and key one and key two. So it has the extra information. So key two was being added, remember, by the client for every call because we implemented that metadata plugin, that um, per call um, credential. And so this is what's adding this for every call. And then we created our own metadata to add this, to 
to add key one, which is the first thing that we did. So now that we know they're all showing up there, now we can say, let's um, do the proper authentication as we did before. So for that, I'll just copy this. 